Uh, we join together in the liturgy for the sacrament of holy baptism. I invite you to stand, and uh, you may need to pick up a hymnal from the pew in front of you as we turn to uh, page 268 in our hymnals. Page 268. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And how is your child named? Kate, Renee, Ripplemeyer, receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Kate Renee according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in her which has been inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope so that with all believers in your promise she would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times the Christian church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In our Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in a small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention then to serve Kate Renee Ripplemeyer as sponsors in the Christian faith? God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we turn the page, we join together in the praying of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Kate, Renee, the Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Congregation may be seated. I do invite you to join with parents and sponsors in answering the questions I now ask. Kate, Renee, Ripplemeyer, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, and to the parents of this child, do you desire to have your child baptized? Kate, Renee, Ripplemeyer, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kate, Renee, the Almighty God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. And Kate, receive this white garment to show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all your sin. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And receive also this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world, Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven, and one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gift, Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. We stand for prayer. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Kate Renee the new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Kate, Renee, Ripplemeyer, God's peace be with you. Amen. Turn to your seat. And 
And welcome to Christian Worship in God's House at St. John's. We gather together on this 16th Sunday after Pentecost and join in Divine Service Setting 3. It is printed for you in your worship handout. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together the intro from Psalm 116.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the collect of the day. Lord God, Heavenly Father, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, help us trust in your abiding grace and live according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading appointed for this 16th Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in the 55th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak responsibly, the gradual. Fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The epistle reading is recorded in the first chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians in the New Testament. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial, imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two, my desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you shall not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand as we sing the gospel introduction and hear the reading of the Holy Gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We join together in the common confession of our Christian faith. We use the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We sing as our hymn of the day, uh, Seek Where You May to Find a Way, printed for us on page 6 of our worship folder.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our sermon meditation is our Old Testament reading from Isaiah 55. We live in a seeker society. Young adults seek a job, a house, a spouse. Parents seek the best education and recreation for their children. Older adults seek investments to pay for their retirement years. Retired folks seek a better quality of life and good health. However, seekers often look for answers in the wrong places. Uh, many today who seek justice think that guns and violence are the solution. Some who seek higher self-esteem or physical pleasure feel that drugs or alcohol or a loose sexual life are the answers. Some who seek the satisfaction of this world believe that uh, having more money and nicer possessions are the key. What far too many seekers are finding, however, are false, empty, and shallow supposed solutions to this sinful life's problems. This includes those who are seeking spiritual truth. Modern philosophy tells us that we are to get in touch with the God that is within us. Non-Christian religions teach people to earn God's favor by their own good behavior and by their sacrificial offerings. Even Christian congregations can fall into this seeker trap. They offer people what they want, Sunday morning amusing gimmicks or Wednesday evening aerobic exercises, instead of giving to them what they need, the assurance of God's forgiveness in His Son, Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah knew all about seekers in his own time, people who wanted a God that they could manipulate for their own good. The true God, however, speaks to us through this passage. He says, seek me, call upon me. I am here, I am near. The ways and the thoughts of the one true God are certainly different from our ways and our thoughts. The true God is unlike any false God that we could ever make up. The true God reveals himself to us. It is the God that we find in Jesus Christ as the God of mercy and forgiveness for us. You hear some say, I have found the Lord, which always to me sounds like either God is lost or he is hiding from us. God certainly is not lost. We are. We are lost in the darkness of our sinful and rebellious lives. God certainly is not hiding from us. We are hiding from God, covering ourselves with a blanket of selfishness. Isaiah's words in this passage, Seek the Lord, sound like God is giving us a command that we are to obey. And we might think to ourselves, oh great, here's just one more thing that I have to do in my life, a life that is already busy and hectic. So how do we seek the Lord, and where can we find Him? Well, the answer is really very easy. It's because God gives that answer to us. These words from our text are not a command to us. They are instead an invitation from God our God is found where he reveals himself to us. We find our God in the person of his Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the eternal God living in our human flesh. We find God acting on our behalf as Jesus dies for us upon the cross. We find our God exercising power over death in Jesus' resurrection from the grave. Though the risen Jesus has now ascended bodily into heaven, our God remains very near to us here and now. God speaks to us through his written word of the Holy Bible that we hear proclaimed to us in worship. 
that we study in Bible class and that we can read for ourselves. God is as near to us as our own holy baptism. And this evening we've been privileged to witness that gift to little Kate in her own baptism. For in our baptism, the name of our triune God has been placed upon us. In baptism, the Heavenly Father claims us as his chosen child. Jesus joins us to himself in his death and his resurrection. And the Holy Spirit takes up residence within our bodies as his earthly temples. And God is as near to us as this Lord's Supper, where earthly bread and wine are also the body and the blood of Jesus present for us for the forgiveness of our sins. Well, in this passage, there is an urgency to God's invitation to seek him. Our text emphasizes the word while. See, the devil makes us think that we can seek the Lord later in our lives. But too often that later never comes. Children want to wait until they are adults before they take God seriously. Singles want to wait until they are married before they will live a God-pleasing life. Parents don't want to force God upon their children. Let them decide for themselves once they've grown. Adults want to wait until they retire before they give God time in their lives. And senior citizens want to wait until physical death threatens them, and then they will turn to God upon their deathbed. But these times of our lives are not in our control. If we keep putting God off in this life, then talk about God will be left to our family members as they plan our funeral and mourn the loss of our life. The time is now for each and every one of us to seek the Lord and to find him where he reveals himself to us in Jesus Christ, in his word and in his sacraments. Seeking God may be a scary thought for those who are not really sure of what they are going to find. This is where we can help others. We can show to them the God who has revealed himself to us. This is the God that we know in Jesus Christ. The one true God spelled with a capital G is unlike any false gods that this sinful world worships. The true God is not a ta demanding taskmaster who makes us serve him. The true God is not a harsh judge who wants to punish us for our mistakes. Instead, the true God is compassionate and loving. The true God wants only what is best for our lives. Instead of a false God that we die for, hoping to appease him, the true God has died for us to make us holy. By his death upon the cross, Jesus has canceled the debt of our sin. The sin that once separated us from our creator God is now forgiven. The true God is one of mercy and forgiveness. That's the promise of our text. It tells us he will abundantly pardon. The original Hebrew says it kind of this way. There's a whole lot of forgiving going on with God. False gods offer us only empty promises based upon our behavior on this side of the grave. Our true God has risen from the dead to promise us a full and a free life with him both now and forever. So this true God is, of course, far different from our human ideas of a God. We might think of God as being a boss who should be pleased with us if we just put in our time and do our work. Such a God then should reward us with raises in this life and with a final promotion to eternal life. Or maybe we think of God as being like a game show host 
who should reward us with prizes if we get enough answers about him right. When we hold on to such a false god of low expectations, the one true God then speaks his word of law to us. He says to us, be perfect and holy as I, the Lord your God, am holy. Or we might think of God as being a mean judge looking to throw us into the jail of hell because we have been so bad. And so to us in our helpless despair, the one true God speaks his word of gospel. You are forgiven, for I have loved you with an everlasting love. Our way of thinking about God does indeed reveal our sinful or reflects our sinful nature. God's way of acting for us, however, shows us his perfect holiness, that image in which he originally created people. The difference between our way and God's way is as great as the distance between the skies above and the earth below. We rejoice in that difference. We gather to worship our different God, not one that we have created to be in our own image, but the God who has recreated us to live in his likeness. Our God in his mercy and in his forgiveness bridges that great distance between his ways and our ways. In Jesus Christ, our God brings us to himself. Our different God then makes us his different, holy, and saved people. Our search for God ends at the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our salvation is there, won for us by God's own eternal Son, Jesus. Our God, indeed, can be found. He is near for us. He is present for us in the human and earthly life of Jesus. He is present for us now also in his word and in his sacraments. The thoughts and the ways of our merciful and forgiving God mean for us our forgiveness, our new life now, and our eternal salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We remain standing as we join together in the singing of the offertory uh, printed for us on page 6 of our worship handout. In our prayer of the church, we remember those listed for us under healing and comfort. Uh, we pray for those who serve us in our nation's military and as health care workers and emergency responders. We pray for those suffering from the coronavirus and the effects of it on our society. Uh, we remember the residents of Oak Hill and Magnolia Terrace in Waterloo as there's been an outbreak there. We pray for our nation as it continues to suffer from division, violence, and unrest in our cities. And we pray for those who are suffering from the wildfires on the West Coast and Hurricane Sally on the Gulf Coast. In peace, let us pray to the Lord and offer to him the petitions and supplications of a people, confident of his promise to hear and answer us with mercy. We join in the prayer of the church. We pray. That we may seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him in the day of salvation, and be prepared by his mercy for the day of judgment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
that we may delight in the light of Christ and his salvation, that sinners may find refuge in his mercy and comfort in his forgiveness, that we may hear the voice of God speaking in his word and be nurtured by faithful pastors who preach and teach this gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. That this word may be the foundation of the home, that husband and wife may be united in this faith and hope, that their children may hear and be nurtured in this word by faithful parents, that the church may nurture the lives of our children through Christian education classes, and that we may all be grounded in the pure doctrine of Holy Scripture through our faithful study of God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may enjoy the blessing of good government and faithful leaders who work to provide peace in our land and peace among the nations. That we may be good citizens and neighbors in our nation. That we may be served for our protection throughout the world by safe and successful members of our country's armed forces and served in our communities by dedicated and blessed law enforcement, health care, and emergency personnel. Let us pray to the Lord that the sick may be healed, the troubled know peace, the grieving be comforted, and the dying be delivered to everlasting life in Christ. And especially for Edna, Cecilia, Willard, Doris, Wanda, C. John, Ed, Joanne, Rich, Curtis, Charles, Gary, Marie, Larry, Cheryl, Lori, James, Lori, Brenda, Cheryl, Angie, Roger, Lola, Vic, Kim, and also for those we now name in our hearts, and that we may all be delivered from fear, anxiety, and despair by God's gracious care. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may commune in faith, that no unrepentant sin may hinder our reception of Christ's body and blood, and that the fruits of this communion may be reflected in a manner of life in keeping with who we are as God's children by baptism and faith. Let us pray to the Lord that we may honor the Lord with praise and thanksgiving and bring to the Lord the tithes and offerings of a grateful people, that we may not forget the witness of the faithful who lived and died in Christ, and that we may at last be joined with them in the marriage supper of the Lamb and His kingdom without end. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord would deliver us from this pandemic and pestilence of COVID-19, remembering especially the residents of Oak Hill and Magnolia Terrace as they have been affected by it, that the Lord would protect, spare, and restore those who are threatened by and suffering from disaster and danger, such as the wildfires on our nation's west coast and the hurricane that hit our nation's gulf coast, and that kept in faith we may be preserved through this mortal life and in death be received into the arms of our Savior's mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Hear the prayers of your people, O Lord, and grant to us all things good and wholesome and keep us from all things harmful. Give us contentment that trusting in your mercy we may delight in your saving will where the last are made first by your generosity and grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of, a great, out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed is he, blessed is he, 
Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith into life everlasting. Go now in God's peace. Amen. We stand as we sing the Nook Diminis. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 We remain standing as we turn the page in our worship folder and sing our closing hymn, Go My Children.
Good evening. You may be seated. It has been our pleasure to have served you in Christian worship this evening and our pleasure uh, to welcome little Kate Renee Ripplemeyer into our family of faith through the water and word of holy baptism. Uh, looking ahead uh, to the week to come, uh, tomorrow we have a pastor elder workshop and circuit forum in our fellowship hall in the afternoon. Monday evening at 7, church council will meet in the fellowship hall. Tuesday at 1.15, we'll, we will be at Garden Place for our outdoor Holy Communion service. And then Thursday at 2, we will hold one of our monthly at-risk Holy Communion services here in the sanctuary. We do wish you God's blessings as we end one week in Jesus' name and begin a new week in his name as well. Mm -hmm.